Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to travel from Florida all the way out west to California to Madera, California, where we find young racer Joey East. Joey, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fine. So what's been going on since the race band has been in effect for you? I know that you've only been in the car a couple times this year, but what's been going on when you've not been behind the wheel? Um, nothing too much. I've been crazy. I try to do all my online school in the morning, and then in the afternoons I kind of have like the simulator, and then like, I like riding my quad a lot and just spending time with my family. And then last week I've also been able to work a little bit, but this week it's been raining, so nothing too much has been going on. So, Joey, I know that you've got a special coming up on MAV TV called farm boy to champion the joey east story how exciting is that that's really cool i'm really excited to see that it's really cool that kenny shepherd and Matt tv and everyone got that put together and i'm really excited to watch it and i think it's going to be really cool and it's really it's really cool and fun to see so let's talk about what is a typical day on the farm look like for a racing champion um, it just depends kind of what time of the year it is. If it's during like harvest season, I'm usually driving like either tractor or trucks or choppers and uh, corn or wheat or just kind of anything. And then in the winter, I'm usually like driving oil or working on the dairy with my brother. So it's all just kind of whatever they need me and they don't have someone I can go there. So the 2020 season has you running a variety of different cars. You're going to be doing some SRL cars in the, in the super late models. You're going to be running the full pro late model series at Madeira, and you're going to be participating in some ARCA races. So once we do get the band lifted and we all get back to the racetrack, you're going to be a busy, busy young man. Yeah, it's going to be really busy. I'm excited for the pro late models, my first year running for points. And I've also been able to do my first archer race and first deep light model race. And that was really cool. And I feel like I learned a lot and really good drivers in all the series. So it's fun to be racing with all of them and learning from them. And it's just a really good experience. So let's talk about the biggest difference between a pro light model, a super light model, and an ARCA car. We know that the pro light model and the super light model are similar. But then when you got to step into that big old heavy ARCA car, uh, so give us a little bit of um, your ideas, or not your, sh I shouldn't say your ideas, but uh, what what you think the biggest difference between those three different types of cars are. Yeah, the pro light model and the super light model, they have the same type of fuel, just the super light model has a lot more power, and then it also has the bigger tire. So everything just kind of happens a lot faster than what you have happening in the pro series but it just has the same type of fuel and you drive it pretty much the same way just faster and then in the ochre coat it's a lot heavier and it kind of feels like a whole different driving style compared to anything i've ever done so that's been a lot different in trying to learn that but so far it feels like it's been going pretty good and i was driving all three of them. all right so what was it like running that first arca race the first archer race was really cool. I, in practice, we were kind of mid-pack. We we're, we're happy with that for, for my first time. And it was going really good. And then qualifying, we we put down a really good lap. And we were qualified third behind Sam Meyer and Jesse Love. So that was really cool. And and the race, we were just kind of saving our stuff. And then we were, we were running about fifth and sixth at about halfway. And then uh, the lines to the rear end melted it. So it ended a little short, but I still learned a lot and it was a great experience. Yeah, you had a you had a great run going on and, and just a almost like a freakish type of part failure or mechanical failure, however you want to look at that. I, I can remember talking to Mike Nake the day after the race and he said, you know what, I've been racing a long time. I've never had anything like that happen. So um, talk about the ARCA series a little bit more. Um, is there a particular track that you're actually looking forward to actually going out and running that maybe you haven't been to 
in the uh, in the the super light model? Um, I was I was looking really forward to original. I did that one in the super light model already, but that one was canceled. I think they're gonna reschedule it, so I'm really excited for that race. And then I'm also really looking forward to current, and that's another half model, and I've never been there, so I think that one would be really fun too. Is there a particular track on that ARCA schedule, once once again, once we get back to rainy, racing, uh, that you kind of think will give you the most challenges? Um, we're not really sure exactly how many, what races we're doing, but I thought going will also be really challenging because I've never been there before. But I'm also really excited for the challenge, and I, I can't wait to do that race too. So you said earlier in the interview that you've been spending a lot of time on your sim. Um, what does a typical session look like? Are you just on there racing? Or are you actually on there uh, doing some training? Or, or give, us, give us a little bit of feedback on what you're experiencing through the sim and how you think that can actually carry over to real race experiences. Yeah, a lot of times you should like Right when I get on, I'll do like my own practice by myself, like in a super light model, like a good car, and then I had a track that I'll drive in pretty soon, or like I've driven at, so I can get more experience at that, so that's really cool. And then I also just try to join any race on pavement just to get good experience racing with people and passing and just getting in the feel of it and getting in a good rhythm with other cars and stuff. So, Joey, let me ask you a question. All the sim racing that you've been doing, have you kind of stepped outside of your boundaries a little bit? You went out and experienced anything in, like, an Xfinity or a cup car yet? Um, yeah, I've done the Xfinity a couple times, and then I think I've also done some cup races, and then sometimes I, I like to do the, the super stops because, I don't know, for some reason there's always super good racing in that lobby and, and the, the slow but it's always a really good racing and I, I feel like I could learn a lot from those too. So as we talked about earlier in the uh, in the program you've got a special coming up on April 23rd on MAV TV and again it's called Farm Boy to Champion and the Joey E story so can you give us a little insight maybe to what we might see in that show? Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot about like the life of me and like, what I do when I'm not racing, but then also kind of like a, like a highlight of the year and some races and some interviews with me about every, me and Ken Shepard about everything we did this year. And it's just really cool to be having that and just a lot just about on racing, but also a lot about the life when I'm not at the racetrack too. So, Joey, let me just ask you a, a question straight up. I mean, did you happen to ever think, you know, three, four years ago when you're basically running quarter midgets, that, number one, you would win a junior late model championship. You'd be running SLR cars for one of the premier teams on the West Coast, which is Nate Clower Motorsports. You'd be already competing in the ARCA series. But above and beyond that, you'd be having your own one-hour show that was, that's actually going to be televised? I mean, did you did you see any of this coming, or did this all kind of happen out of nowhere? Um, at the time of Code of Visions, I, 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 it was kind of my dream to always be, like, getting into higher series, but I wasn't really sure expecting it to come this quick, and it was really cool to be in these series with Mike Nick and their great team, and it's cool to have the hour show on me. I, I never thought that would happen. Well, we're really looking forward to that. So we're just about out of time. Do you have any of your sponsors that you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Ag Center 59, the Soil Ranch, Richwood Meat, Central Irrigation, Tree Bar Caddy Shack, and GCB Farming and Senior Nurseries for all the support they, they get to me and my racing. Well, thanks a lot, Joey, for being with us this evening. And for all of you that want to keep up to speed with Joey, you can do so at joeyeastracing.com. You can check him out on all of his social media platforms for there. Make sure to subscribe to his newsletter. So, Joey, again, the next time that we talk, 
hopefully we're talking about some real racing. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds really good. I can't wait to get back on the track. Thank you. Okay, so if you've missed any of our episodes of Race Face Spotlight, you can catch up on demand at raceface.tv. Until next time, my name is Rod Wortham, and thanks for watching.